What is happening, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick rant on the Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva boxing match, which is going down in October. It's official. It's official. October 29th, to be exact. All right, let's go over their stats and talk about how these guys match up in that squared circle. So let's start with the problem child, Jake Paul. Jake is 25 years old. He stands at six foot one with a 76 inch reach. He has a professional boxing record of five wins, zero losses, four wins via KO, TKO. So within those five wins, Jake Paul has defeated two mixed martial arts, notable fighters, two champions actually, Ben Askren via TKO, Tyron Woodley via decision, and in the rematch via Stone Cold Knockout. Now, as far as Jake Paul's skills, yes, he started off as a YouTuber, entertainment based, but he does have an athletic background, specifically wrestling, which is one of the toughest sports you could ever participate and compete in. And he has trained boxing for some years now. He's big. He's a strong kid. Certainly has knockout power. That's something that you're kind of born with. You could work on it for sure. But out the gate, you can either punch hard or you can't. He could punch real hard. Boxing wise, I wouldn't say he has absolute beginner skill. He is not an elite boxer by any means, but he's got like solid fundamentals. You have to give credit where credit's due. He's got a good jab. He's got a really solid one too. He has an understanding of range, controlling distance, pumping that jab. We saw it in the Wooly rematch. Decent timing. Some concept of setting punches up. You can see some weaknesses in his cardio and conditioning. Because against Woodley in that second fight, and in the first fight actually, you can see he was gassing out and slowing down. Woodley just couldn't capitalize on that though. Now for a guy who's just been training boxing for like 4 or 5 years, he looks about that level. Moving on to a combat sport, mixed martial arts legend, Anderson the Spider Silva. Anderson is 47 right now. He stands at 6 foot 2, 77 and a half inch reach. He has a professional boxing record of three wins, one loss, two wins via KO, and he lost one fight via KO TKO. Mixed martial arts record, because I do think it's relevant, mixed martial arts includes striking, 34 wins, 11 losses. Out of those 34 wins, 23 wins via knockout. Now granted, some via knees, some via kicks, some via straight fists. Anderson Silva is considered one of the greatest of all time in mixed martial arts, former UFC middleweight champion, reigning and defending for a long time. He holds the record for the longest title reign in UFC history at 2,457 days. That's starting from 2006 up until 2013. 16 consecutive victories within that span. Now a notable win in his boxing career, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. The contracted weight was 182 pounds. Chavez Jr. weighed in 184.4, forfeited some money, went over the contracted weight limit. Anderson won the fight via split decision. Now, mind you, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was the WBC middleweight champ from 2011 to 2012. And he has a boxing record of 53 wins, six losses, one draw, one no contest, 34 wins via KO, TKO. So a legit champion boxer. That's pretty impressive Anderson Silva at this stage in his life, late 40s, transitioning to boxing and getting that type of win. Anderson in mixed martial arts, one of the greatest strikers to ever do it. But that's mixed martial arts, where you incorporate kicks, punches, elbows, knees. In the boxing game, he would be very limited, removing most of his full skill set and arsenal. Now, are Anderson Silva's hands at 47 years old enough to best this young up-and-comer? My honest answer, yes. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Jake Paul has no chance because that wouldn't be truthful coming from me. I'm actually a tad bit worried for Anderson. I don't want to sit there and see Anderson get caught with a big overhand right and get starched flatlined. Is that possible? Yes. Is it very likely? I don't think so. Even at 47 years old. 
Anderson Silva is a very, very talented striker. That includes his hands. At one point, he wanted to box Roy Jones Jr. Now, that was some years ago. Would he have won that fight? Who knows? But I do think it would have been competitive. And that says a lot about Anderson Silva's hands. Analyzing Anderson Silva's fights, striking-wise, most of his work was done with his hands. He does have spectacular knockouts via knees and kicks, of course. But I think the majority of his striking arsenal came from his fists. The kicks, knees, and elbows supplemented the hands, at least from my perspective. Anderson still has speed. He's still super slick. That knockout power doesn't go away. Most of that is due to timing and precision, similar to Israel Adesanya. He has great striking fight IQ. I just don't think Jake Paul has a deep enough skill set and a deep enough well of skills and tricks in just the boxing realm to do anything to Anderson Silva or catch him. Now remember, I didn't say it's impossible because you're throwing punches. Anderson is 47. And it's a weird thing. When you're that old competing in combat sports, you may look fine one day and it's almost like you age overnight. So by the time these guys fight, which is coming right up, you just never know. If Anderson doesn't look like Anderson on any level, he might get wrecked. But if Anderson comes in looking like Anderson on some level, he's going to beat the brakes off of Jake Paul. Too slick, too fluid, too many tricks up his sleeve, too much experience. The only thing Jake Paul has is a jab, a one-two, a overhand. And he circles. That's about it. I just can't see him beating Anderson Silva. And I just can't see Anderson allowing that to happen. He knows he's carrying the mixed martial arts community's flag on his back. He's going to want to go out there and show Jake Paul what's up. I think Anderson's going to come in motivated. He's going to try to make a statement. Jake Paul talked a lot of crap about the mixed martial arts community, about the fighters, about their skills. He was just ragging on Costa and Luke Rockhold, saying that he would smoke them both. Has he bitten off more than he can chew with his boxing match October 29th? I think he has, but I have to give him credit and respect. He took the fight. I think he's banking that Anderson's too old, that he's going to have a considerable advantage with the youth, the size and strength. Anderson's not small though, and he doesn't move or look like a typical 47 year old. He still has a lot of skill. As long as Anderson doesn't go in there and fight stupid, leaves his chin out there, allows Jake Paul to hit him on purpose just to showboat, just to show he has a chin. Don't do that, Anderson, please. Because the combat gods have a sense of humor, and that will be the fight that you get knocked out cold, similar to what happened in the first Whiteman fight. I'm expecting Anderson to come in, use great footwork, use great movement, pump that jab, control Jake Paul, stay on the outside, avoid those big shots, those big overhands, counter and make Jake Paul pay. I think Anderson's going to slowly pick away at him, turn it up as the boxing match progresses, then put that heat on him, cook him and get him out of there. Anderson Silva via KOTKO. That's all I have to say about this boxing match. I know some of you guys get upset when I talk about Jake Paul. It's just a relevant trending topic right now. We have a mixed martial arts legend competing against him. Had to touch on it. You guys let me know in the comments section, what do you think about this boxing match? Do you think Jake Paul has bitten off more than he can chew this time? Or do you think he will take out the spider in that boxing match? Appreciate you watching the video. If this is your first time at the channel and you enjoy the content, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you want to show support, like and share. Appreciate that guys. And I'll catch you all on the next segment. Until then, everybody, please stay safe. Take care. Later.